discuss tetralogy of fallows today uh, on the prenatal diagnosis uh, i'll keep posting uh, the video so it's a good idea to subscribe uh, the channel i what i am going to discuss i am not going to discuss about how to diagnose the tetralogy of fallows on a, a fetal echo i am going to discuss about what are the parameters you should be looking at because you going to be counseling the parents and i need you to tell them that if the surgery is going to be simple for tetralogy of fallow or surgery is going to be difficult so i want to as make an assessment of uh, you know fetal echo severity of tetralogy of fallows okay so that's going to be the main thrust of today's talk and the reason why that you know this is the pattern of a referral from one of the studies in poland and the referral was that uh, for a fetal echo and then the abnormal four chamber view or or abnormal three vessel view were very very important uh, reasons for referral and now look at the reason for referral is that suspicion of tetralogy of fallows so we guys have grown you guys are started doing far better than you were doing before now you can suspect tetralogy of fallows and you refer to a tertiary care center so you are now not looking for the diagnosis of tetralogy of fallows from a from a cardiologist you know you are looking for what next and how are we going to counsel our parents based on the severity of tetralogy of fallows so my talk is going to be on severity of tetralogy of fallows it would be a good idea that you kind of uh, go till the end of the slides because at the end of my talk i'm going to tell you just two parameters which you can do it very very easily so i am going to discuss all the parameters why these parameters are actually required and at the end i would tell you these are the two parameters if you take no z scores nothing you would be done with and you will be happy and to give a prognosis i don't think so i need to tell you anything about tetralogy of fallow the only thing which i want to tell you uh, is that why i am discussing it today is very very common so disease is common it's good to discuss a common disease because you every day you'll come across a patient which might have a tetralogy of fallow and secondly if i do it well the outcome is excellent uh, uh, the the recovery is is good there is less than 2% mortality of surgery and the 15 year survival is excellent so i am going to go to the basics before i tell you that what are the parameters of severity of tetralogy of fallows the basics include there are four components that's why it's called tetralogy component 1 is an aort vst causing an aortic override that's number 2 and number 3 is a right ventricular hypertrophy which we see in a neonate or an adult but don't see in a fetal heart but that's all right and uh, then pulmonary stenosis now these are the components arising again aorta which is overriding you have a, a hypertrophy of the left right ventricle you have a, a pulmonary stenosis but actually speaking you look at this video i think i'll start it from the beginning again now the whole thing is the septum coronal shift the coronal shift towards the right side causing the aorta to override the ventricular septal defect but i have made a small animation to make it more clear so it's not actually the tetralogy it starts with a single component and that single component leads to four components of tetralogy of fellows what is this now we have a septum and this is a coronal septum which divides the 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 aorta and the pulmonary artery right so this coronal septum is the crux of the things in in the development of fetal uh, fat tetralogy of fellows now look at now if the coronal septum shifts toward the right side it makes the pulmonary artery narrow it makes a vsd and it makes aorta override and the right ventricle becomes hypertrophied because of the ps so just by the shift of the coronal 
the physiology of tetralogy develops it's not a tetralogy it's monology it's just a shift of the septum why i am discussing the shift of the conal septum this is what is important from severity of the tetralogy of fellows so the top severity depends upon the shift of the conal septum more the shift narrower is the pulmonary artery more is the aortic override agreed more this shift toward the right side more severity more override smaller pa lesser the conal shift lesser the aortic override larger is the pulmonary artery so what we used to call as a pink tetralogy of fellows where you have a lesser override there is a less shift of the conus lesser override bigger pulmonary artery to a level when the conus is quite shifted to the right making the pulmonary art artery very small and by the conal shift what happens the aorta overrides more and more on the septum so conal shift decides the severity of tetralogy of fellows so once you've understood this i'm going to share with you a case then i'm going to tell you that what are the parameters of severity which you are going to take a, a calculations or a measurement so this is a school teacher who the 19 weeks of gestation and she was referred for a fetal echo with a suspected tetralogy of fellows so you guys are picking up tetralogy of fellows and then you sending because you want more on the tetralogy so that's what is my today's uh, discussion so tetralogy of fellows this patient had an aortic override and you can see this is the aortic override and the blood from both rv and lv actually enters into the aorta you guys know it so this is aortic override again and if you go to a three vessel view you see what you see the pulmonary artery is small agreed two is that it's not actually making a v it is making a t and there is something called what we say is a question mark sign what is the question mark sign because the aorta is dilated and it once dilated it moves slightly on the right side and then comes here to form the descending aorta it gives as if the sign of question mark but this again you are well aware of so now if i say that this should have been a three vessel view which is normal and the abnormalities are smaller pulmonary artery two is that it's not connecting here to form the v it is connecting here to form the t right so these are an additional parameters when you do uh, uh, looking at the fetal heart now again <clears throat> just for a revision this is a large vsd in this case there is a lesser override of uh, uh, the aorta and a resultant lesser override of the aorta as i told you lesser conus shift lesser override of aorta larger is the pulmonary artery the pulmonary artery is slightly large okay it's smaller than aorta thou but it's not as small so this is a kind of a pink fellows then you there's a view where you see right pulmonary artery pulmonary artery which is going branching into two the branch which goes towards the aorta is a right pulmonary artery going away is at the left pulmonary artery and we take following measurements one is the aortic annulus and second is a pa annulus right what is the meaning of this how do we assess severity i would discuss in my subsequent slides before i do that it is important for you that why i i after all i am taking these measurements what for i am taking these measurements and the reason is that it decides which type of surgery is to be done then let's first know about the surgeries of tetralogy of fellows in a very very simplified manner of course there are corrective surgeries right where you do a total correction uh, of closing the vst opening up the infundibulum and enlarging the pulmonary artery so that's how the main surgery is done and this can be done if there is an ideal anatomy pulmonary annulus is good size pulmonary arteries are good size and we do this uh, corrective surgery at age 3 to 6 i am going to show you diagrams of this staged surgery 
This is what was we used to do it in the past because we were not very comfortable doing surgeries of a younger uh, infants. So that's why we used to do a palliative surgery first. The, or even today we do this because if their anatomy is bad, the, we do a first palliative procedure and then second surgery. So now we can tell the parents that yes, on a fetal echo, I have certain parameters which suggest that single surgery can be done after corrective or we would have a complex surgery which is, would be required or it has to be done in a staged manner. So two surgery would be required. That's an important bearing on when we are counseling the parents. What is the palliative surgery in the past? What we used to do, even we do it today, the numbers have become small. Palliative surgery is that we simply connect uh, the subclavian artery with the pulmonary artery. Done. So we have created a systemic pulmonary shunt. So this is a shunt between artery and a pulmonary artery. So systemic artery to pulmonary artery shunt we create. It's called a BT shunt. So BT shunt shunts the blood into the pulmonary artery and gives relief to the cyanosis. And in a case the pulmonary arteries are small, it lets them time to grow the pulmonary artery so that we can do a corrective surgery. This is the corrective surgery what we used to do in the past or we are even doing it today in a very small number of patients where anatomy is not comfortable. What we did is that we incised right from the pulmonary artery, main pulmonary artery to the right ventricle mid so that we can repair the surgery VST, we can open the, uh, the pulmonary valve and one cut we would be able to do both the surgeries. But we, we, we had a problem with this. Cutting an annulus means the pulmonary valve is gone. Right? We destroy the pulmonary valve by cutting the annulus. Then we had a long incision in the right ventricle which produced right ventricle dysfunctions. And not only that, it produced arrhythmias, tachyrhythmias. So we landed up in trouble with this surgery. The surgery was good couple of years outcome was fine but after about a decade this is what used to happen you have a pulmonary artery which was markedly dilated there is no pulmonary valve here because we have cut the pulmonary valve by doing the surgery and there was a free flow pulmonary regurgitation shown by this arrow now this free flow of pulmonary regurgitations eventually after about a decade would produce a very large right ventricle and right ventricle were hypokinetic both because of pulmonary regurgitation and the second reason I already told you because we cut the right ventricle when doing the surgery. So this was not an ideal situation. Here we had to replace the pulmonary valve, do some corrective surgery of the right ventricle uh, when the child is between 10 to 15 years or old age. So that is what is not good. This was a second surgery. So then we thought, no, this is not the right approach. Let's have a right approach. What is the right approach? Is that we f we don't try to uh, close the VSD through uh, the ventricular uh, incision. We, we open the right atrium. Through the right atrium, we do a repair of the VSD patch through the tricuspid valve, of course. We make a small incision only in the infundibulum just to open up the infundibular stenosis. We make a small incision into the pulmonary artery to widen the pulmonary artery and we can widen the annulus as well slightly retaining what? Sparing the valve. The pulmonary valve was saved so that there was no regurgitation in the future and there was no right ventricle dysfunction in the future. The results of this study, this uh, surgical procedure are excellent. So what are the parameters? which are going to tell me that we have to do a staged surgery or we can do straight with this valve sparing surgery. Okay, the parameters what we need to take is the pulmonary valve annulus. If annulus is small, you would not be able to do corrective surgery at the first place. If the aortic annulus is, the, that's a number two measurement. Number three is the pulmonary artery measurement. Four is the right pulmonary artery and fifth is the diameter of descending aorta. 
Okay, so this is how we used to take it on this view. This is the pulmonary annulus. That's an aortic annulus. We take uh, the pulmonary artery, main pulmonary artery. We take uh, the right pulmonary artery and we take a diameter of the descending aorta close to the diaphragm. Fine. So good. View were good in almost all the views, but this view is little challenging. How do we achieve this view? Is that this view comes in between the three vessel view and RVOT view and there is requires a slight angulation to get the pulmonary artery branching and you get a lot of information in this. There is a conus which is actually shifted towards the right ventricle. There is a large VSD. You see the pulmonary valve. Annulus is small. You see the main pulmonary artery and the right pulmonary artery and the left pulmonary artery. You can see the VSD flow from the right to left from the RV to the aorta. Okay, and you see a narrow uh, narrowing of the flow here because of the infundibular stenosis below the pulmonary valve. This infundibular stenosis happens because of what? Because of this coronal shift towards the right side. So the, based on these eco parameters, we have Z scores. If you have a pulmonary valve annulus Z score less than 3.5, it required a multi-staged surgery. And in case the annulus and aortic valve annulus, the it's 0.7 or aortic uh, pulmonary annulus is 70% size of the aortic valve annulus required surgery on multiple stage surgery. So all these are bad prognostic signs. Pulmonary annulus index, we don't use it anymore. Right pulmonary artery Z score less than 0.6. RPA to the descending aorta less than 0.6 and pulmonary artery peak velocity if the velocity is more than 120 centimeter per second that also indicates a severe pulmonary stenosis. Do we do have to all do this? I told you I'm at the end I'm going to tell you just simple two things no Z scores nothing so two ratios good enough. Pulmonary annulus and aortic ratio. I told you if it is less than 0.66. Okay. I'm just trying to simplify the figures. I'll tell you the reason why. Or you take a right pulmonary artery, which I think is a challenging thing to do. And descending aorta diameter, which you guys are good at getting a sagittal view. 0.66. So what? Wonderful. Rule of two third. If these ratios, pulmonary annulus and aortic annulus, Two third, if you take that ratio of two third and less than two third, if the pulmonary artery is less than two third, you say it is severe. So ratio of two third would be, remember the rule of two third, and then you would be able to do assessment of severity of tetralogy of fellows. This always reminds me this, that, you know, whenever I read, even if I present something to you guys, I always come to know that you know, I learned something which, you know, I did not know. So I have learned today also that still have a lot to learn. Good idea to subscribe because I am going to post uh, the, the videos which are going to be very useful to you in your practice when you are doing a fetal echocardiography. Bye for then. Happy learning.